Hi everyone, it's Elsie here from the customer success team and today we're looking at an introduction to the import process. So in this video we'll talk about all the different steps that will be involved in the import process and you'll get a kind of overview of how the whole thing is going to look. So by the end you'll have a clear idea of where you're going next and all the steps to look forward to over the next couple of days or weeks depending on sort of what kind of data you have. Who is this video for? Great question. Um, everyone and anyone who intends to import data into the Keeler system. So whether or not you're a new user, maybe you've just started with Keeler and you're wanting to transition from your old system or from spreadsheets, get everything into Keeler so that you can move forward in the Keeler system. Or maybe you're an existing user, you've already onboarded, you've already got your data into the system a while ago, but now you're wanting to import new data or perhaps update existing data via an import. So anyone really. What does the importing your data process look like? So there are five main steps to the process and we have a deep dive set of resources for each step. The first one is gather. So as its name would suggest, gather all of your data, make sure it's in one place and in an Excel spreadsheet format. So this might be exporting your data from external systems, uh, exporting it as a CSV file or an Excel spreadsheet, or saving all of your collected spreadsheets in the one place so that you have a good strong beginning to spring off from. Next is the format process and I think that this is the biggest chunk out of all of the five steps the format process is usually where we see our users putting a lot of their energy into because it's a great opportunity to clean up your data make sure that you've gotten rid of all of the stuff you don't need and, uh, and set yourself up for success in Keeler. Uh, every system stores data differently and Keeler is no exception. Keeler has specific formats that it requires data to be in when it's imported into the system and so you'll be in this process you'll be using Keeler's resources, the ones that we've provided, uh, to format your data so that it's compatible with Keeler. So changing your data um, so that it fits into Keeler's kind of parameters. Review. So once you've finished formatting and you think that your data is good to go, it's ready, you've followed all of the guidelines and the resources to format everything correctly, send it through to us for a review. We'll be happy to double check it. We'll do a last minute sort of sweep and provide any comments or suggestions to you um, and you can make final updates before you move on to the next step. So you've probably heard from us already, so you can feel free to just use our email address uh, to send through your data or if you like, you can reach out and request a Dropbox folder. So we've, you can just reach us at support at keeler.com. Import. So once everything's been reviewed and checked off and you're confident in your data, you can begin the import process, which is kind of the second biggest chunk in, of all the five steps. So we have a full section uh, for importing, so we run through all the things you need to be aware of, um, how to use our duplicate checking tool to make sure that any double ups are put together in a really smooth way. Once you've imported your data, check it, make sure everything looks how you expected it. Um, double check, for, use our duplicate checking tool as well one last time in case you missed any duplicates. Uh, during the import process and just get familiar with where everything's sort of ended up. So compare your spreadsheets with Keeler and, and understand where each field is located so you know where everything is. Data. What types of data can you import into Keeler? Great question. There are four different types. So each works a little differently. The first is contact data. This is probably the most uh, central data type and everything connects back to contact data. So think of it as individuals or companies. It's the people or the organizations that you have in your address book. So there the, they each get their own profile in Keeler and then you connect things like donations 
or volunteer activity to that profile. So I think donors, volunteers, team members or other employees at your organisation, companies, organisations, things like that. Because contact data creates contact profiles, which all other data types sort of connect to, contact data should always be imported first. So create your contacts in Keela first by importing contact data and then move on to import your other data types. So like I said, it's an address book sort of. So think full names, uh, company names, company positions, email addresses, phone numbers, uh, street addresses, tags, custom fields, things like that. The next is the next one is donation data, our second most common type. So these are donation transactions. So any transaction that your organization has received that was eligible for a donation receipt is considered to be donation data. So we'll accept all types. Um, these transactions can be money, they can be in-kind donations, or our securities as well. I've seen sort of stock options and securities included before too. So again, donation data should be imported after contacts. So you should import all of the donors on your donation transaction spreadsheet. They should be imported as contacts first, and then afterwards import donation data. And then your donations will be uh, sort of grouped under each donor's profile really nice and neatly. So for donation data, think things like donation amounts, dates, fundraising campaign names, receipt info, stuff like that. Revenue data. This is a really big, broad umbrella, but it's basically all other transactions that aren't donations. So if the first one was only transactions that are eligible for donation receipts, revenue data is everything else. Any transaction that is not eligible for a donation receipt is considered revenue. Kind of like your miscellaneous payments. It includes things like grants, sponsorships, or purchases. And again, it should be imported after contacts. So import uh, all of the contacts from your revenue spreadsheet first and then your revenue data afterwards. Think things like transaction amounts, dates, payment methods, things like that. Final type is volunteer data. So volunteer data looks at actual volunteer activities, not the volunteers themselves. So volunteers, of course, would be imported as contacts because that's sort of people information. Whereas the volunteer activities are the actual sort of instances of volunteering. So think volunteer hours, volunteer dates, the cause area that someone volunteered towards. Not everyone tracks this information. Um, you might find that when you move to Kila, you want to start tracking this information and you can start fresh. But if you do have records of volunteer hours and things like that, that you're wanting to get into Keela, volunteer data is your main, is your main import. I've uh, spent a little bit of time just then talking about how you'll be importing contact data first, and then your donations, revenue data, and volunteer data will be matched up to those contact profiles. And we'll go, um, go over the duplicate checking process and this kind of matching process in much greater detail in our import training. But I just wanted to get you thinking about it now while you're sort of getting an idea of how this import process is going to work. So there are three pieces of information that Keela uses to match up your um, imports with existing records in the system. So the first one is origin ID. And this is most commonly used uh, in external systems. So you might find that if you're coming from another system, that there was a unique uh, ID number that your contacts were sort of tracked by. And Keela has its own as well. So uh, we use them too. But if you like, you can choose to keep the origin IDs of your previous system. So it could, it could look like origin ID, contact ID I've seen, donor ID, basically the unique number that was prescribed to your contacts and then matched up to other donations that those contacts made, things like that. If you don't have an origin ID, no worries, there's other pieces of information. You can just ignore that kind of 
that whole part of Keela. The next one is full name. So this is um, a great one if you've got sort of existing contacts in Keela and you have donations that you want to match up to those records. Uh, you can choose to use full name if you like. One thing to note is that all of this information must match exactly. So if you have any differences in the spelling of your full name or if you've got a missing initial, um, for example, here if I had just Elvis Resley or Elvis Presley, uh, those would not be considered matches. It does need to match exactly. So just make sure that your con if you're going to be using full name to match up data, make sure that your full names in your contact spreadsheets or existing contacts in Keela match up to your other data types exactly. The last option you have is email address. Uh, this can be a great option if you don't have origin ID or you're not confident that your full names match exactly. Email addresses can be a great way because uh, more often than not, they're unique to a single contact. So it can be a really handy way of matching things up. One thing to be mindful of here though, is that if you have a, a, a bunch of contacts who use the same email address, I would avoid using email address during your imports because if you've got, say for example, a couple of different family members who have their own profile in Keela that share an email address, if you import that into the system and choose only email address, uh, you might find the system gets a little bit confused because it doesn't know which contact record to apply those, that information to because you have more than one email address. So when you're starting to think about how you're gonna use this, look at your data and think, do I have contacts who have the same email address? Are my contacts, do they have the exact, is my, are my full names consistent across all of my spreadsheets? Do I have a unique origin ID that I'm confident in, um, that, every, that it's correct on all contacts profiles and it's unique, uh, and, and can I use that to match everything up? Of course, we'll go through this in more detail in all of our other training sessions. Just really good to start thinking about it now. Last but not least, what resources should you use? So things to look out for next, the knowledge base. Uh, that's where our training videos are and, and we have lots of articles as well that'll talk through all the different ways you can format your data in the format process. Uh, things to look out for in the import process. Again, how to match up your um, imports with existing contact records, how to use our duplicate checking tool, things like that. So we'll let you know what next steps to go at the end of each video. Uh, professional onboarding services. So maybe you don't want to do this process yourself. Maybe you'd like to get the customer success team, me and my colleagues, to do this, uh, this part for you. We offer it as a service that you can purchase. You can, and we can format your data for you. We can perform the import for you. It's up to you and there'll be links here where you can check out what that looks like. Uh, finally, don't forget the free data review. We uh, are happy to double check your spreadsheets before you import them and give you any last minute tips and suggestions. What are your next steps? So now you've got an, an understanding of all the different steps that are gonna be involved in this import process. Uh, I recommend heading over to our importing your data data prep video. My colleague Laura is going to tell you how you can gather your data uh, and how you can format it in a general overview. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to uh, reviewing your data.